Yeah, um, so Sarah asked me to present some of the rifting models that I've been doing over the last couple of years. Um, and it's a sub project that I think kind of highlights the wonderful community that we now have around the Basin Genesis Hub. So Kevin Hill, Jane Kinnean and myself started talking um, about this work at probably the BGH meeting three years ago up in Sydney. And we, we, kind of, we presented a, a bit, bit more every year. Um, so it's rifting models using Underworld um, 2, so specifically Underworld Geodynamics that Roman Bashaw has, has pulled together. Um, and I suppose just a, a shout out as well that Jane is at Basin Scope Consulting as well as at Curtin University now, and Roman and Louis up at ANU. Um, so the work that, um, that Jane, Kevin and I are interested in is trying to understand the evolution of the bite basin. Um, and so the three of us are, are kind of all, our research interests lie kind of at the perimeter of all of the, the BGH research interests. So in this particular body of work, Jane has been looking at the gravity, deep seismic and basin morphology of that area, while Kevin has been doing his, um, Kevin's superpowers with restoring the paleo water depths with sed sedimentation, decompaction, um, and also looking at um, what's replacing the erodible material within the sedimentary basin. And then my work here is looking at numerical, numerical models. Um, and so I suppose all of our work is feeding in on each other and we're iterating through um, our results as we go. So it's been a really interesting um, time for us and it's still an ongoing piece of work. Um, obviously we've all got lots, lots of things going on, um, but we're still trying to catch up when we can. I think Jane's here today actually, which is nice to see. Okay, so with my specific um, rift models, um, what I'm interested in looking at, at at this stage is how sedimentation affects the rift styles and also the uh, um, thermal evolution of the rift and how that affects the sedimentation. So I basically use underboard geodynamics um, with 2D basic sedimentation and erosion, so I'm not using badlands. Um, and I model um, multiple rifting phases uh, with, with cooling phases, and I track the sediment temperatures with time. So previous work by people associated with this research group, as, as well as, as others include like Marina Salerno, a PhD student that finished just at the start of the BGH, looked at how different rifting setups um, and, and, um, and cooling phases can change quite dra dramatically the coupling between the different layers within the crust and lithosphere. And so we've progressed that work. Uh, there's quite a lot of details in the model, so I'm not going to go into them now in my little five minutes. Um, I'll just say that uh, we're modeling the upper crust, the lower crust, the lithosphere, and the asthenosphere. Um, we're pulling on the side um, boundaries at, in these models, 0.6 centimeters per year on either side. Um, uh, I have initial geotherm down here, if you can see, it goes up to, well, it's I've said 1600 Kelvin, so you can subtract that for Celsius. And this here is our strength profile through with depth. Um, so it maxes out at 10 to the 23 Pascal seconds. Um, and I have, I suppose, a cooling phase in some of the models that I'll be talking about at 13 million years. And I have erosion and sedimentation just above and below sea level, which I've just defined at zero kilometers. I'll step forward. It's taking a while for these slides to, to step forward. Um, I'll basically show you a few slides um, that show the evolution. So here we are at 6 million years through time evolution in a model um, with sedimentation and erosion, but there's no cooling phase. Um, so just to work through what's happening in this slide, because there's quite a lot of detail. Um, at the top, we're looking at strain rate. At the bottom, we're looking at the temperature of the sediments. So the sediments in the top profile are seen in this green here at the top. Um, the white contours show the material. The black contour is the 1300 degree Celsius um, temperature contour. And the gray show different strain rate contours. Um, and so just to reiterate as well, as we evolve, we'll get more of the sedimentation. Um, we have a different scale 
for the second plot, which shows temperature. So you can see I've zoomed in on the top 15 kilometers. Okay, so at 6 million years of rifting at 0.6 centimetres per year, we don't have much um, sedimentation, um, but as we step forward, to 9 million years, we can see that we have um, a bit more sedimentation. We have two quite strong uh, shear zones, one dominating. Um, we have asymmetric sedimentation. Um, and you can see the temperature profile of the sediments. So then at 13 million years, um, we again have a, a growing basin. It is asymmetric um, and really prominent um, two shear bands. Continuing to go through, um, I'll just step forward in time a bit more. So at 13 million year, 14 million years, sorry, 15 million years, so the faulting into the shear zones are starting to look pretty interesting so as they progress and, and migrate um, across that dominant shear zone on the right hand side. And at 16 million years, we get a secondary basin forming. And then skipping forward until 23 million years where we have essentially um, I suppose, reached the point where we have breakup. Okay, so this is all for a model that has sedimentation and erosion, but doesn't have a cooling phase. So in the next slide, I have a summary here. So we have going down, I have different times. So 10 million years, 16 million years, and 23 million years with no sedimentation or erosion on the left-hand side. In the middle is the visualizations that I just stepped you through. So that has sedimentation and erosion, um, but with no cooling period. And then on the right hand side, I have a cooling period imposed at 13 million years. So that's a time where I reset the geotherm um, and then we end up having a stronger lithosphere. And so you can see that the evolution of all these three systems is, is quite different. So. Um, initially, without sedimentation, we have um, just one dominant shear, shear zone um, and uh, quite, uh, it appears quite a brittle upper and lower crust area. With sedimentation, the additional lithospheric stress, um, so the, the, the pressure caused by the additional sedimentation, you can see that you have increased strain rates along those shear bands and we have multiple shear bands. Um, Again, interestingly, when we introduce that cooling phase at 13 million years, that does affect the, um, the evolution of the shear bands. And we really do progress throughout with just one shear band after that cooling phase. Um, I'd just like to give a little shout out to Fabio Cremieri's work with the color maps. I was just chatting with Luke Mahoney in a private chat about the color maps of these. So if anyone's interested in having a look at scientific color maps that um, I suppose are inclusive, but also uh, do, don't focus on um, different areas within the color map. Um, have a look at Fabio's work. I really recommend it. Okay, and so then to similarly summarize the sedimentation temperatures um, with time, I've just shown the two models that have sedimentation. So on the left-hand side, it's without the cooling phase. And on the right-hand side, we have the cooling phase. Um, so you can see again, quite significant differences. Um, with the, the, obviously the temperature of the sediments are different as we've allowed them to cool, um, but we still have quite high temperatures at the base of some of those deeper basins. Um, so this is the type of work that um, Kevin and I are progressing along with Jane's previous work with gravity and it's an ongoing um, body of work but it also highlights I suppose the flexibility of underworld geodynamics and also the ease of being able to track all the different parameters through time and space which is interesting and to also being able to, to modify those boundary conditions um, as needed to, to accurately I suppose, um, models quite specific ge geological locations. Uh, thank you.